Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe. Welcome back to Short Term Trading Live with Oscar's 691st installment of Short Term Trading Live with Oscar. Traders, we have a couple of things to talk about on this board. U.S. indices, European indices, looking very strong here. They have a green army, baby, yeah. 30-year T-bonds still looking weak. We've got a well of a trade on with those T-bonds, and we'll talk about that. Sugar in a pullback. So on the board today, we have a green Omni and a red Omni. Traders, this video is being filmed on Tuesday night for trading Wednesday. That would be February 9th, 2011. Do me a favor, if you do not understand the risks involved in trading commodities, and there are many, you should not be in this game. All right, traders, listen up. We got the two armies on the board. We got European indices looking this way, U.S. indices looking this way. We have bonds looking horrible after that beautiful bear flag that they broke down out of. And that makes sense. In our environment today, if you have a green omni or you expect indices to go up, you expect the bonds to go down in this particular environment that we're trading in at the moment. Then we have the pullback in sugar. Traders, if you like the analysis lesson that you are going to receive in this video in a few moments, please come see me at my site. It's www.livewithoscar.com. Click the link for the free chat room and come on in and join me in my trading rooms and I'll be glad to help you out. All right, traders, should be exciting. I love the charts I have to present to you in this video. I did a lot of homework. The charts look great. And in fact, I don't think I want to waste any time here. With no further ado, let's go have a chart lesson. Okay, traders, you are looking at the Dow Jones Transportation Average Daily Bar Chart. And there's a few things on this chart I want to show you. Why are we continuing to buy the dips in U.S. indices? Why do we think they look good? Well, here's a lesson for you. This chart's got some things on it to show you. First of all, these two red lines here represent the huge parallel channel that we've been in for about a year now. Huge. And that we're staying inside of. But... Right now, we're at a spot where many analysts are calling it a pullback, a head and shoulders top, the market's going to go down, and I am here to tell you, traders, that is not what you are looking at. This is what you are looking at. When in a bull market, a head and shoulders is merely a continuation pattern. Head and shoulders do not top off a market all by themselves. It requires a multiple set of technical analysis to with head and shoulders and many other setups before you can call a top. Simply, when you're in a bull market, a head and shoulders formation is a continuation pattern like this one. So here we are in another one, and we expect it to move higher, but there's something more interesting here. There are diamond formations that show up in the transportation average chart from time to time. Here's one. The end result was a big rally. We are in another one right now, diamond formation. We're just starting to come out of it in the transportation average inside of a right shoulder, and the next move should be this. Now, want to see something interesting? This, my friends, is a shoulder, head, shoulder. A little bit lopsided, but still the same. You have a head and shoulders with a diamond in the right shoulder and a blowout to the upside. Head and shoulders, diamond in the right shoulder, blowout to the upside is expected Keep an eye on the transportation average. Remember, when in a bull market, head and shoulders that are this small are only considered continuation patterns. This has a diamond. It blew out. This has a diamond. We expect the upside. Let's look at another chart. Next, NASDAQ, the one that has been leading the race for months on end, the NASDAQ daily bar chart. Traders, you can see we're in a beautiful parallel channel. Nice bull flag. We broke out of the bull flag. We are positioned right here and poised to make new highs. you got to love that NASDAQ chart. U.S. indices looking good. Let's look at another. Next on the block, Dow Jones Industrial Average Traders. This has been rotated into sector rotation. If you have not noticed, the large cap stocks in the S&P and in the Dow Jones Industrial Average 
have been being purchased like crazy. Look at the runaway train that we have going on here in the large caps. That means that our recovery in this market is starting to gain some legs and become self-sustaining. Very nice. As the markets move higher and you start to see sector rotation, you'll see times where maybe the transportation average backs off a little and the Dow Jones takes off. Then maybe the Dow Jones backs off a little and the NASDAQ takes off. That's considered sector rotation when in a bull market. Don't let that knock you off the longer term view, which is very bullish in our indices for the moment. Let's look at another chart. Okay, trend is the ES, the E mini, the daily bar chart. Look at how beautiful that formation looks, traders. Very, very nice parallel channel. Moving smartly through it, hits the bottom. Moving smartly through it, hits the bottom. Moving smartly through it is the next move. We should move higher. Continuation to me, as far as I can see technically, you gotta love these indices. Let's look at more. Traders, let's go to Europe. Let's go to Germany. Look at that DAX. I mean, wow, is that a beautiful chart structure? Very strong looking, staying within the parallel channel, has nice big up moves, then has a pullback, nice big up moves, staying within the channel, looking bullish, you gotta love the DAX, you gotta love that European market, the leader out of Europe, looking fantastic. Let's go look at the FTSE. Traders, the FTSE, look at this, nice bull flag gets broken out of as of Tuesday's close, sitting up here now, very, very smart looking. I say this bad boy follows the DAX and moves itself higher with the U.S. indices. FTSE looking good. Financial Times Stock Exchange or the London Bourse. Let's look at another. Okay, traders, now we're shifting gears out of indices into 30-year bonds. If you recall, I put this chart before your eyes a week ago and said, traders, here we are. We're finally breaking out of our bear flag. We can go short this. The market has broken down tremendously since then. And what did it do today on Tuesday? Puts in an outside reversal down day. What does that mean? Well, you see this little day here? Market came down, then put in that little day. Let's call it this one. Well, what happened on Tuesday is the market rallied up higher than the day before's high, dropped lower than the day before's low, and settled lower than the day before's low, making that an outside reversal down day bar meaning that Wednesday should be continuing on the downside in bonds. That's this bar right here left on Tuesday. So we've looked at indices. We've looked at the, the bond market. You can see that beautiful bear flag, how well it worked. Let's go look at another market now, traders. Something slightly exotic compared to our financial instruments. Okay, traders, let's get exotic. You are looking at the sugar market. It is a... Daily bar chart and traders, believe it or not, this may end up being construed as a big bear flag right here. This being the flagpole and this being the flag. I'm not calling it a big bear flag yet because sugar's been in a big bull market. However, I do think that this right here is a setup for a short in sugar for Wednesday. You had a big parallel channel instead of calling it a flag. Let's call it a parallel channel. You only had one overthrow and it came right back in and respected it. Well, we've broken down out of that channel as of Tuesday, and we have created a new parallel channel that we're now forming. And I think that we're below, because we're below this channel, I think we're going to start to follow inside of this one and expect the sugar to have a couple of down days here. So not really calling top and sugar, because you can see you made a high and a higher high and a higher high. So no sense in calling the top there yet, but I think that there's a day trade or two on the short side in sugar so take a look at the sugar market. Let me show you an indicator now, which belongs to sugar. Okay, traders, this is the sugar market once again, and now this is a technical indicator. It is called the MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator. That is a very bearish look at the moment, traders. You see that the averages have crossed. They are both pointing down. This is a lagging indicator, this one. It's not very fast. It usually points out market trend, beginning of trend or continuation of trend. This is pointing towards the downside, and it just started two days ago. Two simple days ago, it went into a sell pattern. I think that the formation looks bearish. I think there's at least a good day on the short side again today in the sugar. Traders, do your own homework, pull your own charts, never ever accept anyone's technical opinion without doing your own technical analysis first.
So, traders, you've seen the charts. There is my technical argument for the green arrow in the indices, both European and U.S., and for the red omni in the 30-year T-bonds and the sugar. Make sure you pull your own charts and do your own homework. Traders, if you like the lesson that you've seen here today, I can teach you much, much more than that. But I cannot do it unless you come on down to my site and join me in my trading rooms. They're free. Don't trade alone. Come on down and join the free room. And from there, we'll get to know one another. I'll do my best to make you a better analyst. That, in turn, should turn you into a better trader at some point. Traders, oh, a shout-out to my European Omniacs, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traders, Omnicamp is filled with this year, or this Omnicamp, I should say, European Omniacs. I got a whole handful of you coming in. So, hey, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys in Europe. We're going to have a blast in Vegas together, and you guys are going to really, really learn a lot about technical analysis and how to apply it. So congratulations for making those seats here at Omnicamp. Traders, you may have noticed this evening, Tuesday evening for trading on Wednesday, the Omni recommendations are starting to become worded slightly differently. It is my opinion that it is time for you Omniacs to have a little more leeway in how you take these Omni recommendations so that you can use your own analysis setups along with the Omni rec and together the Omni rec and you can figure out where you want to get in. So take a look at those Omnis. I'm still there. I'm giving you decent levels of where the Omni would do its business. But I'm kind of opening up the wording a little bit so that you guys that are quick that want to be short first and then get long, or you guys that are already long and want to jump out on a short and then go short, I've opened up the Omni Rex to allow you to trade a little bit more of your own systems, your own approach, of course, using the Omni and the Omni Trading Academy as your checklist, as something that you look at, you say, okay, I see Omni's arrows pointing up. I see Omni has an area where he thinks support's going to come in. Let me do my own homework and see if I agree with that, and then you create a trade that will work. So I think this is going to help all of us. I think it's going to help you be able to get into some of these markets. Traders were starting to trend. A lot of markets now are starting to trend where you guys, you Omniacs, you men and women out there, you need to get yourselves in and stay in a little bit here and not be day trading as much because we're starting to trend now and you don't have the worry that we did a year and a half, two years ago, that you got to be out in cash every night. So being that we're starting to trend and this market recovery is starting to gain some strength and some legs, I think it's time for you on the X to start getting in and maybe holding after you catch a nice big dip for a few days. So I'm opening up the Omni so that you can trade that way. Of course, we are here at the helm to help you. So do not let these changes confuse you. They are for the better of all of us. All right, traders, I want you to take a look at the charts in this video again. I know you've just seen them, but you may want to go take a look back. If you'd like, I share these charts with all my Omniacs at chartupload.com. It's www.chartupload.com where I post the charts that I use in these videos for you to see. And you can post charts there for us to see and post them in our chat rooms. So please come use chartupload.com. Is there anything else I need to say in this video before I skedaddle and go check out some markets? Are we good? Stop is your best friend. Well, we always know that stops are your best friend in Omniacs. We all know that, right? In this industry, a stop is your best friend. You should always place stops. You should never trade without them. You should always place the stop first. Why do I say that? Quick scenario for you. Let's say the day of the flash crash. Everyone remembers it, right? Let's say you wanted to buy the market. And instead, you put your sell stop in for two lots or ten lots or whatever the protective stop was going to be. And before you had a chance to buy it, that flash crash happened. Do you know what would have happened to you? By accident, because you had your stop in first, you would have made a big score. Big score. What else could have happened to you on that day? If you had your stop in first, and then you did your buy order, you would have bought. You would have been stopped out, out of the game. No big deal. My stop worked. What could have happened to you if you did not place your stop first on that flash crash day? Here's what could have happened. You buy five, two, whatever your number is, then you go to type your stop in and the flash crash takes place and you're out 10, 15 grand before you can even start typing your stop order. That's what would have happened to you if you didn't place your stops first 
So let it be a lesson to you that you do not need to learn yourself. Place your stops. Place them first. Never trade without them. All right, Omni X. If you do place your stops first, it should help you keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best things you can do besides placing those stops first to keep your emotions at bay is to say this to yourselves every morning, every afternoon, every evening, and you know what that is. Stops are in. Emotions are out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided.